can definitely expect to pay more for many reasons. Do not wait until your dog has an abundance of coat to take them to the groomer. If your dog's coat is matted, too much coat. Your dog may be overweight, oversized for the breed that it is. Can you wash him with this product? Why would you charge me more? Prescription shampoo, they have a sit time on the skin and coat. So that means they're supposed to sit on the skin and coat for five to 10 minutes. This could definitely result in an extra charge. Fleas are definitely a problem. Now that has put every other dog at risk that is going to be in and out of the salon because it costs the groomer money to exterminate the flea problem. You will endure extra charges if you bring your dog into a grooming salon with fleas. Fearful dogs are unpredictable, hard to work with. They refuse to cooperate because they're so fearful. The groomer and your dog are working through this problem for your dog so that it goes away and it is not a problem anymore. Poop and pee in the grooming salon. How do we control this? How do I control whether my dog poops or pees in the grooming salon? Another thing is dogs throw up a lot when they get to the groomer. If you come to pick up your dog really late, we have lives, we have paperwork and stuff we have to do aside from just grooming the dogs. That could definitely cause you to have to pay extra. Be honest and upfront. No shows are a no, no, they're not good. What should it cost you to have your pet professionally groomed? Is it possible that you will have to pay more to have your dog groomed than the client that just left and you passed on your way in to drop your dog off to the grooming salon? Is it possible that two dogs of the same breed will have two different invoices upon checkout when they leave the pet grooming salon? What extra charges can you expect to pay when having your dog groomed and why? How can you avoid these extra charges? We're gonna cover all that and more right now, my friend. I am professional pet groomer Amy Lee, and it is absolutely my pleasure to share with you the secrets of the pet grooming industry. In this video, I will explain how pet grooming pricing works and help you understand the components that make up the cost for you to have your dog professionally groomed. There's a lot of confusion surrounding what it should cost you when you take your dog to the groomer. And also just confusion surrounding the idea of what type of care your pet is going to receive during that grooming session. I created this video for you and your pet to make sure that you both get the best possible grooming experience available to you. But first, let me explain some of the reasons why your dog's grooming session may cost you more than you expected to pay. And don't forget, I will also give you the solutions that will drive down the cost to have your dog groomed. The first thing is this. If your groomer has to demat your dog, or if you bring your dog in with a matted coat, you can definitely expect to pay more for many reasons. For one, it is definitely a lot more work. If your dog's coat is matted, it is because the proper care hasn't been given to maintain the coat between grooming appointments. Oftentimes, people will wait way too long to bring their dog back to the groomer after leaving a grooming appointment. They simply feel like my dog doesn't need groomed until it really looks awful. And that's not your fault. It's just the way our brain works. You see, as a groomer, I see it. Before I was a groomer, I felt just like you. I didn't feel the need to take my dog to a groomer unless he looked a mess. Boogers stuck in his eyes, hair falling out, shedding like crazy. I didn't realize I'm supposed to be brushing my dog two to three times a week because that is what's healthy for my dog. That is also what is going to encourage a good, healthy skin and coat by brushing, just brushing. I didn't realize that my dog needed to be bathed at least every four weeks, if not sooner. Every dog, every breed. I didn't realize that, just like you guys. And that's why I'm sharing this with you so that you can understand. A matted coat, or if your groomer has to do dematting, this is going to be an extra charge on top of what it would have already cost you to have your, let's say, poodle groomed. Because the groomer has to spend more time and do more work to complete the job properly. I'm sure that that makes sense. So how do you avoid this? How do you avoid not getting charged for 
dematting costs or bringing your dog in with, with some mats or a matted coat. How do you avoid these charges? I'll tell you, it's very simple. You reschedule your dog at the time you pick him up from that grooming appointment. You make another appointment before you even leave within six to eight weeks. Eight weeks at most, if you really want to take care of the health needs of your dog's grooming needs because their grooming needs when they are neglected will definitely cause your dog to suffer from allergies, itchy skin, dry skin, which is just an imbalance in the skin and coat. And there again, it goes back to if your dog is bathed, brushed, properly, regularly, you will not have these problems and you will also see a lot fewer visits to the vet. I can guarantee you most of your dog's allergy problems are due to the skin and coat not being cared for as often as it needs. And that's because you didn't know, but you do now. So the next reason why you could be charged more for your pet's grooming appointment is because you may have too much coat. Meaning if you like your dog to be kept an inch or two inches of coat, you wait until the dog grows five inches of coat. It may not even be matted. The groomer has to bathe, brush, and dry five inches of coat. So let's picture your big golden doodle. Five inches of coat, bathe, brush, dry. On a big golden doodle, that's gonna take up to two hours just for that. We haven't even trimmed the dog yet. There again, guys, it goes right back to the issue we just talked about, which was keep your dog on a six to eight week schedule and they will never have an over amount of coat, an abundance of coat. Pet groomer is gonna have to brush, wash, and dry before they can even clip the dog. And there's another thing you may not realize. Clipping the dog can't happen until the coat is clean and you can get a comb through it. Otherwise, our clippers, our guard combs that leave length on dogs, they're not gonna get through it. They're gonna stick in the coat and they're not gonna be able to move through it because the coat isn't clean. It's not properly prepared. So. There you have it. Do not wait until your dog has an abundance of coat to take them to the groomer and say, I, I would like you know you to trim it down to maybe an inch or two inches. Well, they sure can do that. But if they have to bathe, brush, and dry five inches of coat before they can clip it down to one inch to two inches, that's two hours worth of work right there. And on a large golden doodle, the trim is gonna take over an hour. And I don't like any dog to have to go through a grooming session that is longer than three hours because that is three hours that they are standing the whole time. And think about it, your dog is never standing for three hours straight, right? They need breaks, they get tired, their legs need to take a little rest. So we can't expect our dogs to endure that type of a grooming session. And the only way to avoid that is to schedule them every six to eight weeks. So they are always in a maintainable amount of coat. Another reason you may be completely unaware of of why you're being charged to have your pet groomed is because your dog may be overweight. Your dog may also be oversized for the breed that it is. Let's say the groomer says, I have your mini golden doodle on my schedule and you bring in a hundred pound golden doodle. That's not a mini. And that can go for, you know, say a miniature poodle that is actually 50 pounds. That's not a miniature poodle more the size of a standard poodle. The pet groomer has already prepared and allotted a time slot for your dog's groom based on your dog's size. You just brought in a much bigger dog than expected. You will have to pay more for the groom, as well as your dog is going to have to endure a longer grooming session. And the groomer didn't plan on this taking three hours. The groomer scheduled you for an hour and a half groom. There again, you could be refused and have to reschedule. You could end up paying a lot more for the groom because the dog is not sized appropriately for the type of groom that was scheduled for your dog. So if your dog is overweight or your dog is oversized for the breed, you could definitely expect to pay more for the groom. Now you ready to have your mind blown? because this one you would not expect. Let's say you go to the vet and your dog has an itchy allergy to their skin or whatever and your vet prescribes you a special shampoo for your dog to be bathed in. During your dog's next grooming appointment, you take it with you to the groomer and say, oh, by the way, can you wash him with this product because the vet prescribed it and it will help him. This could definitely result in an extra charge. And you think, but I, but I supplied the shampoo. 
How, why would you charge me more? Well, I'll explain this to you and it makes perfect sense. And you're gonna understand when I explain it to you. First of all, most products that are some type of skin treatment or prescription shampoo, they have a sit time on the skin and coat. So that means they're supposed to sit on the skin and coat for five to 10 minutes at least, which means for five to 10 minutes, your groomer has to stand there and just kind of keep your dog safe and happy in the tub, massaging the product throughout the skin and coat. So it takes longer. You see, most pet groomers use some type of bathing system that is designed to optimally bathe your dog using minimal water and minimal product, all of which are benefits to you, to the groomer, and to your pet. It gets the job done much faster than hand washing. Your pet groomer paid a lot of money to have that nice, bathing system available to you and your pet so they can provide top quality care for you. They have to hand wash a pet because of uh, a specific shampoo or conditioner that you may choose that you want them to use or because the vet has prescribed a special shampoo for your dog. That is gonna take them a lot more time to, to do this. So, you know, it's only fair to understand that their time is worth money, just like your time is worth money in your profession. So you have to look at it that way. And speaking of prescribed shampoos, I do want you guys to understand that they will not work and they will not do what they're supposed to do. If your dog is only getting bathed with that product, once every six weeks or once every eight weeks. If you read the label, it'll tell you to wash your pet with that product, oftentimes three times a week. So by bringing that product to the groomer and saying, oh, my dog has itchy skin, the vet prescribed this um, eight weeks ago, so now I'm bringing it to you so you can wash my dog with it, it is not going to cure the problem. It is not going to do what it was supposed to do when the vet prescribed it to your pet to help them because it was supposed to be a product that was used to bathe your dog two to three times a week not a win-win if you don't use the products properly. So that's probably something you guys didn't know. Interesting. Next up, fleas. Now fleas may not be a problem in your area. Depends on where you live. Fleas are definitely a problem and the northeastern part of the country where I live, I do not welcome fleas into my salon. However, if your dog does have fleas and the groomer's grooming your dog, um, it's in the tub, whatever, and realizes your dog has fleas, now that has put every other dog at risk that is going to be in and out of the salon. And the groomer is going to have to exterminate the flea problem. A flea problem is not just what you see on your dog's coat. That is 5% of the flea problem. There are three stages to fleas. So 5% of the problem of the entire colony of fleas that are living on your dogs is 5% is what we see. That's it. Those are the adult fleas and they're ready to die. They have a 21 day cycle. There's two other stages of fleas that are coming that are living on your dog that you can't see, including the flea eggs. And they're gonna be dropped all over your salon. So it has to be addressed and it does cost money and it does put the other pets at risk. So, but hey, listen, I had to put fleas on the list because you will endure extra charges if you bring your dog into a grooming salon with fleas because it costs the groomer money to exterminate the flea problem. On a good note, and with the flea treatments available to us on the market these days, guys, typically fleas are not a problem anymore. We all have a good handle on them. Keep your dogs flea free or you could endure an extra charge of the groomer. And the next one should be pretty obvious. Um, although you as a pet owner may be unaware that your dog falls into this category. And that is fearful dogs. Fearful dogs are unpredictable, are hard to work <laughs> with during the grooming session because they refuse to cooperate because they're so fearful. This is a real issue and it doesn't mean your dog can never be groomed. If your dog is aggressive, you can expect that a lot of groomers won't groom your dog or that there will be an extra charge because it is a, a huge risk for the groomer. Very big risk. Fearful dogs are absolutely a detriment to their own selves too because they can easily be unpredictable on the grooming table and injure themselves by carrying on so much. But here's what I want to give you as a solution and I want to talk to you about this. There are groomers who will work with your dog if your dog is fearful or unpredictable during the grooming session. And what I mean by that, they may be willing to work with your dog in intervals. So you're going to have to pay for that 
But in turn, what's happening is the groomer and your dog are working through this problem for your dog so that it goes away and it is not a problem anymore. If it were me and I had a problem dog that was fearful and, and very frightened, I would want my grooming sessions to be short and sweet with that dog. That doesn't mean I'm just going to shave him down and give him a horrible looking groom. I still want to meet those grooming needs. But what I'm going to suggest to you is, is that we've put together a program, you as the pet owner, me as the groomer, and your dog. We're a team. We're going to put together a program of training sessions on the grooming table with me alone and your dog. 15 minute session here, 15 minute session three days from now, 15 minute session four days from now, until a week from now, maybe we're ready to actually put your dog in the bathtub and approach that. Then we're going to send the dog home and we're going to have to work through that and you will have to pay for those services. But what you're going to get in the long run as a dog who is okay with grooming. And why that's important is because every single dog breed has grooming needs. And it's very important that you understand that. If your dog is fearful, very unpredictable, try to build a relationship with a groomer that will help your dog work through their fears of pet grooming so your dog will no longer fear it. Now this one is um, very unfun as a groomer to have to deal with and it could cause you to have extra charges on your groom. Dogs that poop and pee in the grooming salon and you're thinking, hey, how do we control this? How do I control whether my dog poops or pees in the grooming salon? There are things that you can do to keep this from happening. Let's face it, your dog knows that he's not supposed to poop and pee in the house. So when he's at my house in my grooming salon and he poops and pees, he feels bad about that. This is what you can do so that everybody's happy, including your dog. Make sure you give them a good walk around before you bring them into the groomer. I see so often some of my clients, they actually just pick their dogs up out of the car, carry them in, hand them to me. They didn't give the dog a chance to go to the bathroom on the way in. And let's face it, oftentimes dogs have to poop because they get anxious. When they come to the groomer, they know that they have to stay there and that you're going to leave them. So that makes them a little anxious because they ultimately would rather be with you than be left with the groomer. Give them a chance to poop and pee on the way in. My particular grooming salon has a very long walkway from the parking area into the salon door and to the entrance. And that gives my clients and their pets ample opportunity to empty out their bladder and their bowels so that we do not have those problems. Obviously the groomer has to clean up the dog, has to clean up the dog poop. That's how you may suffer extra charges because of the cleanup that they have to do. Sometimes you, you've bathed the dog, they're dried, they're ready to be trimmed and they pee on themselves a little bit, you know? because they can't hold it or it gets on their feet. You've got to throw them back in the tub, wash those feet, dry them again. It's extra time that you didn't plan for as a groomer. You could be charged extra if this happens to you and your dog when they go to the grooming salon. There again, the solution is be sure to walk your dog plenty before you take them in and leave them with the groomer. Another thing is dogs throw up a lot when they get to the groomer because the owner may have given them 10 treats, which a, no dog should ever get 10 treats in a week, let alone a day. So their stomach's full and now they're kind of a little bit anxious. That's gonna come back out all over the table, all over the groomer, all over your dog. It's a mess. You know, avoid feeding your dog before their grooming appointment if possible, or if their appointment's in the afternoon, just make sure that they get to eat in the morning and they have plenty of time to digest their food and go to the bathroom. That is also a, a real thing, guys. Pee and poop and puke in the grooming salon. Another reason your groomer may charge you more when you come to pick up your dog is if you come to pick up your dog really late. The groomer may have needed to close an hour ago and you've kept them past closing time. Um, you know, we have lives, we have paperwork and stuff we have to do aside from just grooming the dogs. That could definitely cause you to have to pay extra for the groom when you pick your dog up. Sometimes people are pretty late and, and often we have to take the dogs for potty breaks because it's just, but they've been here for four hours, five hours, or the dog is excessively barking at us the whole time. It, it's, it's distracting to, uh, you know, the groomer and the dog that the groomer's working on currently. Don't be surprised 
If your groomer says, please pick up your dog at two, try to be there right at two or, or a few minutes later is understandable. Do not come early. That's a no-no because your dog may not be finished and then they may get all wound up when they see you, meaning that the groomer may not be able to finish the groom because the dog's too excited. Just be courteous with those time frames. Um, work with your groomer and say, no, there's absolutely no way I can get back here by three. Maybe the, the groomer can make some type of revision to keep your dog for an extra hour or two, but they have to know about it in advance. That could definitely cause you to suffer an extra charge is a late pickup. Another reason, you could get charged more as if you have previously had a no-show appointment, whereas you just didn't call, you didn't reach out to the groomer at all and let them know you weren't gonna be able to make the appointment because that time slot, let's figure if it's a large doodle, that's that's a hundred and some dollars that the groomer had not only scheduled in their day, which is a huge block. So they could have groomed three other dogs in the time it took it would take them to groom your 100 pound doodle. If you no show, that really costs them money. And don't forget, we don't have, as groomers, insurance for health insurance. We don't have retirement plans. Our time is money and we have to calculate everything in our business. In order for us to provide the service to you of being your pet groomer, we have to make enough money and be able to survive and pay our health bills. We have expenses. They are not really calculated into your your price. A no-show, your groomer will let you know when you reschedule the dog, I have to charge you for that last appointment or I have to charge you half. Whatever their policy is, it's their policy and you can't change it. They need to operate their business. That's how it goes. You could expect to have to pay for a missed appointment. Most groomers will give you a reminder call or a reminder text two days prior to the appointment or a day before the appointment. And that is your chance to say, oh my gosh, I forgot I have to work. Or I, I have a doctor's appointment. Oh no, I just realized that. Usually they'll excuse about a 24 hour window if you say, I have to cancel and reschedule. Within 24 hours, they're not gonna charge you. Within eight hours of the groom, they're probably gonna charge you because they can't fix their schedule that quickly and get somebody else in there who is waiting. No shows can definitely cost you money. And if it happens to you, don't think that I'm, I can't go to that groomer anymore. She, you know, I no showed on her and she'll never groom my dog again or she's gonna charge me. Just face it because if you have a good groomer, don't groomer hop because you didn't pay the bill or you, you had a no show. Your groomer's human too, they, they do understand. Be honest and upfront. No shows are a no, no, they're not good. Guys, just keep your dog on a six to eight week schedule with your professional groomer or if you groom your dog yourself, make sure that you put it in your schedule that you are grooming your dog every six to eight weeks and get it done. A lot of these problems won't happen. Hopefully this has helped you guys so that you can avoid those extra costs so you can really streamline your grooming appointment for your dog, which is only gonna benefit your dog and your groomer. And love your groomer because they love your dog. Now would be a great time to smash that like button if you haven't already and show your support for all us groomers. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please do so because I don't want you to miss any of the secrets that I share that are gonna benefit you and your pets. Thank you for joining me today.